here with Leo, the newest member of our team, who is an art director, and uh, he's been in the game for like a year and a half now? A uh, year and a half, coming up on two years. Yeah, so you know, he's relatively fresh to the game, so we have him on the channel today to kind of give a little bit of insight and uh, knowledge to you guys that are trying to break in. So we're going to start it like we do many others, which is, how did you get into advertising? It's kind of something that I didn't really uh, expect. I got my bachelor's in uh, graphic design and I ended up going into a job right after school. Uh, it was a package designing job. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Where it was, was that at? Uh, it was up in Boston. So like my journey has kind of been all over the place. Uh -huh. And I think that that's something that I think a lot of young people will kind of get used to coming in the industry. For you sure. just kind of have to feel like what is like right for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I was up there um, as a package designer. It was really cool, but at the same time, I just felt very one dimensional. I just felt like as a designer in that particular place, we just kind of had to, you know, bow down to marketers, kind of had to listen to their direction. I felt that as designers, we had a lot of um, quality input and, and knowledge and what we could design and direct. Sure. So I think that coming out of that, I just really wanted to get into something more that was art direction. After that experience, I actually went back to school and I went to SCAD and I went to the advertising program there. And so I tell people what SCAD is, because so, a lot of people don't know. Yeah, yeah, so SCAD is, uh, it's called the uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. Art school really helped me kind of be around all these creative individuals. Were you nervous at all? Like, were there crazy skill levels already? Because had other people gone to school for that originally? Or oh yeah, like that? for sure, for sure. I think one of the big things for me was kind of seeing that you're surrounded by all these talented people. It wasn't necessarily intimidating, but it was actually kind of cool. Because it gives you, I guess, more motivation mm -hmm. to do well in what you do. Sure. One of the things that was really big to me in my journey was going to the career fair. I know that we hear a lot of the times that, oh, you know, you go to the career fair, uh, you're going to make those connections, you're yeah. going to get that job. And you know, we're always like, our natural reaction is like, yeah, right. Like, you know, that happens to this person. I know yeah. that story of this person and, you know, just, like, is that gonna happen to me? Yeah. So for me, it was kind of funny because I went to that career fair. I, I felt like I had some good leads on some interviews and, and um, hopefully something that could come about. Sure. And I was, I was really looking for something that'd be an internship. It'd be cool if it was a full-time, but I know that nowadays uh, agencies like to um, bring in young students to do the internship first to kind of yep understand both the, the student side and then the agency side to see yeah. if there's a good fit. Well, it acclimates the student to the to the place of work and, and vice versa. I think the, the thing that's so underrated about an internship is that you're interning in hopes that you will get a job there because it's almost this other way as well. Like, you wanna make sure that the agency's right for you as well and that's a good test period to kind of do that. You know what I mean? Agreed, agreed. With that, I mean, towards the end of this career fair, um, I was on my, I was actually headed on my way out and I kind of look over and I saw someone who I knew who graduated a year ago uh -huh. and uh, shout out to Ariel by the way. I saw her and I was like, oh, I know her. I, I know that she was in one of my classes a year ago. And so um, I knew that when she graduated that she found a job and that she mm -hmm. uh, was doing well. And I know that from her work in class, she was really talented and this was definitely something that I should have, I should um, go and approach and, sure. and talk to her. So I walked up and uh, introduced myself. And of course, um, luckily for me, she remembered me and um, kind of talked to her, like see how she was doing, see what she thought about the agency that she worked with. She recommended me to get an interview and, and uh, talk to the recruiter. And the interview actually ended up lasting an hour. Okay. So I felt like, I felt like everything was connecting. I, I could tell the recruiter was really, uh, into what I was looking for and in the end um, they eventually offered me an internship. I think one of the things that I look back at and I think that's important for people to kind of pay attention to is like make sure that you make connections in school because mm -hmm. you never know who is in your class and who you may end up seeing down the line. Yeah I mean it's crazy because like you don't have to be their best friend it's just establishing those relationships. Everyone's un in the same understanding. When you're graduating, like everyone's looking for that job. And some mm -hmm. people are gonna luck out and some people are gonna be left behind. And it's not for a lack of effort necessarily or a lack of skill. Sometimes the right opportunity just pops up for some people and doesn't pop up for others. So 
when something does pop up for someone that you know and they get kind of established, it's just an open door for you to kind of communicate and potentially, you know, make it to that next step. Yeah. You know? Then you made it to the TL internship. Now you work for Tracy Locke. So how did you turn that internship into a job? When I first got in, I didn't really know what was going on. So I was brand new to Texas. I had no idea what to expect. Uh, so I think that that was another big thing where it wasn't just the agency life, but it was just the whole change of pace for, mm -hmm. for, that, for that summer. I think one of the key things that I, I really wanted to do when I first started my internship was to show that, that I wanted to be here. Yeah. Um, I think at first I was kind of trying to understand the agency, see if this is a place that I want to be in. Because mm -hmm. I think that to me that's important to make sure that I fit um, with the agency, I fit with the, the culture. 100%. Everyone's really open, helping, and I'm someone that loves to learn. The interns that are most appealing to the agency are the ones who are willing to learn, who know that they don't have it all figured out yet. Our intern um, group, we had no idea if we we're gonna get a job, like if yeah. they're hiring. And I remember we just kind of walked into our, uh, one of the guys who runs the internship, we went to his office and just kind of asked like, um, you know, we have a couple weeks left. We didn't really know how to approach it. We didn't want to say, hey, we want a job, uh, but we, we needed to say that. So we kind of told him that, you know, we're interested in a job, we want to work here. What, like, what is our outlook on this? Yep. And he kind of laughed at us and said, like, you're just telling me this now? Like, I, I, you guys didn't tell me. So I assumed that nobody was interested. As soon as I voiced my, um, my interest, yeah. I could tell that everything started to change. I could tell that they were definitely interested. From the rumors, it didn't really seem like the, the office that we were interning really had anything yeah. um, open at the time, yeah. um, but they had an opening up in their Wilton office up north in Connecticut. And I'm originally from uh, New York, so it was, to me, it wasn't that bad to travel back. Yeah. I ended up taking an offer from the Heineken team up in Wilton, um, and that was that was really awesome. That was. A great time and that's another thing like sometimes you have to move for that job right There's yeah not a spot you know where you necessarily were but it led to the next spot where you were going to be and I think that's where that establishing relationships is really important because you were able to establish enough of a relationship in the Dallas office to where they reach out to Wilton and say hey we have this guy we think he'd be a good fit you know mm -hmm. what I mean and so yeah. that's super important as well now you're back in the Dallas office on an amazing team. An amazing team. Just such a good team. Uh, but we won't go too much into that. Uh, okay, so uh, that's how you got in. And so for other people trying to get into advertising, what kind of advice do you have for them? Break it up. So if you're in the internship phase, um, really make an effort to show that you want to work there, that you want to be there. I think that's important to show that they're getting a young, passionate, driven individual mm -hmm. who really wants to be there, that wants to um, learn and grow and. Um, is gonna become a valuable contributor to the agency. Mm -hmm. um, if you're still looking for an internship, you're still in school, you're out of school, and you're looking, um, I would say make sure to keep updating your portfolio. Agencies are looking for new skills, looking for mm -hmm. um, people who can do um, specialize maybe in, in, in something that maybe not everybody has a has knowledge in. Most of all, like just, just be personable and, and try to, uh, you know, talk to agencies, try to put your name out there, um, use your social media to your advantage. I think that's something that's important to mm -hmm. kind of brand yourself in a way, not necessarily that, oh, you're just a student, you're, you're yep. you know, you're, you're a designer, you're an art director, you're a copywriter, you're um, a creative in general. Yep. So showing that creativity that you have. How can one calm their nerves as the end of school is approaching and they're like, like it's around the corner and I have to get this job. Yeah, I think one of the things that they stressed at SCAD for me was to make sure to do your research with agencies. So um, it's important to look into agencies, look at what you think is a good spot for you, um, look at their accounts, look at their clients. Thank you for all that juicy knowledge. So now, is there anything you'd like to plug? One of the things that I've been working on is kind of working, doing work outside of work in a sense. It sounds kind of crazy, but I started an Instagram channel for fun, um, just feeling that creative outlet that I have. Because sometimes at work, you don't get to, you know, fully expand on that, and, yeah. and sometimes you get stale. And for this, like, I'm doing something for sports, and that's something that I'm really passionate in and yeah. a big fan of. And I think that's huge because so many people make the excuse of like, 
you know, oh, the past three months, I haven't done anything to build my portfolio, right? Well, that's on you. Cause like, if it's not happening at work, you have other time outside of work that if you really wanted to, you can put in, you know, the work to make, to expand that creative muscle and to make some like cool things. And, and I've seen your channel and it's a sweet start. Thank like you. the stuff looks really good. And not only that, we saw Leo's channel and we're like, oh shit, we had no idea he could do like this level, this crazy quality of work. And so now we're thinking of him when it comes to things that are going to utilize that skill set um, and the style that he's kind of um, creating for himself on that channel. So what's the name of the channel? Because people want to know. Yeah, so the channel is uh, Leo Ab, uh, L-E-O-A-B underscore FX. Cool. So if you like sports and you like design, check out his channel. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been awesome to have you. Thank I think you. people will definitely gain some knowledge, um, especially like being fresh at the agency. You have the freshest perspective out of anyone you know, that we could have had at this point. Until next time, we'll see you later.